In this video, I'll show how to use Fusion 360 to create the geometry of your heatsink design if you're more comfortable doing your CAD work in this software. In Fusion 360, it's pretty easy to change your units. Um, when you start a new file, you can go over to the highest hierarchy here, and in document settings, you'll see that the units are set to millimeters by default. You can change that to other options here, so we can put it directly in inches, so all the numbers will reflect that. I'm going to keep it in millimeters to show you that uh, there's another way to get around that if you're doing a quick design like we are. One of the things I like to do in Fusion 360 is to uh, keep all my components in their own uh, organization over here. So if you right click on the highest level, you can add a new component, uh, top option, and you can change the name of it, um, which is useful if you have a lot of things going on. Let's begin with the cube. So I'm going to name this cube and press enter to get out of that. Uh, and the cube has faces that are rectangles. So a uh, rectangle is um, general type of a square. Uh, so under the sketch options here, I'm going to sketch a rectangle. And I like to use the center rectangle most often. Like most CAD programs, it wants you to first pick what uh, plane you're going to be sketching on. So I'm going to pick the bottom one and I'm going to start my rectangle uh, right at the center here. You can see it's snapping uh, to that point. So one click to begin, uh, and we can eyeball this and drag it out to the um, size that we want, or we can type in the numbers because it's already got that top blue value highlighted. Uh, now it's over on the side, now it's back on the top. So one inch, as long as I include the units when I type something in, it does the uh, conversion for me. So I'll hit tab to go to the other dimension and make that one inch as well and then enter commits those changes uh, so that it's done sketching that. A couple of navigation things that I'll be using in Fusion, if you hold down the center mouse wheel and move the mouse, that is pan, so that just moves it around without rotating it. If you hold down shift in the center mouse wheel, uh, when you move the mouse that will orbit so you can get a three-dimensional view. Uh, and if you want to zoom, you can just scroll the center mouse wheel uh, to resize that. Next we need to make this square a uh, three-dimensional object. That's under the create option up here and is extrude. Um, so click on that. You could also use the keyboard shortcut of just hitting E. Now uh, I could type in the value right here or click the blue arrow to drag this up and down. Um, that looks about right, but to make it exactly right, I'll do one inch and type that in. Hit enter to commit that. Now it's got this three-dimensional object for us, the cube. That's our first component. Uh, these are called bodies in Fusion 360 speak. So we, we made the sketch to begin with, and then it made the body based on that. So there I see this one. You can hide it with the uh, light bulb, turn it back on, if you want to see if that's the thing you're actually actively looking at. Now let's add the second component. Uh, which is the rod by right clicking on the highest level again and adding a new component. I'll rename it for clarity by calling it rod. And you can see that since this is now the active thing that we're working on, it grayed out the cube, if you can still see that. If I wanted to switch back and work on the cube, when you hover over that component, you have to click on this circle, uh, and now I can change that body or sketch. So going back to rod as the active one. Uh, let's add the uh, cylinder to the bottom of the rod this time. Um, so that cylinder begins with a circle. Under the sketch menu, you have a bunch of options. I'll do the center diameter. And I'll use the orbit to kind of look underneath the cube and click on the plane that's on the bottom side. Now it's made that view orthogonal again, so we're looking straight down on that plane or straight up through it. I'm going to place my first point of the circle uh, in the middle and type in half an inch, so 0.5 inches. Enter. Uh, this also is going to need to be extruded. This time I'll use the keyboard shortcut by just typing E and selecting the closed shape that I want to extrude. This time since we're going below the plane, uh, it's going to make these numbers negative. So if I want to type this in, I have to do negative 6 inches. And 6 inches was the maximum length that rod could be then enter to commit that change. Uh, if I zoom out a bit, we can see the whole object now. And uh, it's a little hard because it grays out the things that you aren't working on, but I can go back to cube, go back to rod, 
uh, and check those things out individually. To get this into Discovery Live so we can run a thermal uh, analysis on it and find that solution, I could go into each of the individual bodies and right click them if I wanted to look at those one by one, saving them as an STL file. But I want to get the whole object together with both components. So on the highest level again, uh, if I right click, you get the same option to save as an STL file type. And that's a stereo stereo lithographic, uh, which will um, have some downsides that we'll see in a second, but is really universal for three dimensional objects. Uh, these settings are okay. And it then asks me where I want to save this. I'll put it somewhere obvious, like on the desktop and give it a name that I'll find like heatsink or HS for now and save. In Discovery Live, which I now already have open, I should be able to begin with a new document and then um, open the file where we saved it. The um, trick here, you may not see it where you saved it. I saved mine on the desktop. And if it doesn't show up in your list, that might be because it's only looking for file types that are space, space claim files, which is the ANSYS uh, CAD workspace. So make sure you go down to STL instead, and then you should see it in your list. So double clicking that to open it, we now see the three dimensional object that we created in Fusion. The downside with this right away, if I get in close, is you can see the triangles that are making up uh, the face here. So it's not treating the cylinder skin as one closed shape, it's using these uh, triangles, which is part of the STL or stereo lithographic um, file format. This is the most efficient way to define three dimensional shapes because uh, all of those triangles share common vertices which allows um, for a lot more data in a small file format. Uh, that's going to cause us some troubles if we want to make changes on the fly to this geometry. For example, if I wanted to change the diameter of the cylinder, it won't let me select that entire outside skin. It's looking to grab either the triangle faces or the uh, edges of those triangles. Clicking on that and pulling on it, we'll see some interesting things happen. It pulls that fin outwards and um, resizes the triangular faces to keep this closed. And while this might actually be a more efficient heat sink right now, uh, that will be something really hard to manufacture or at least more difficult. So that should get you started um, using this uh, Fusion 360 method of creating your geometry. Um, the downside being, again, if you want to make some changes after creating a thermal solution, you'd actually have to go back to Fusion 360, make those changes, import it one more time, and then recreate your solution.